Hello everyone, I'm Kath Armstrong, creator of the Cheapskates Club, where our goal is to live life debt-free, cashed up and laughing. And tonight I'm going to quickly show you how I pressure can chicken. Now, chicken fillets have been really inexpensive here the last couple of weeks. The sale was extended, I was notified by email. $4.99 a kilo for chicken breast fillets is a really good price for where I live. So last week I was able to get 24 and a bit kilos. They were all vacuum sealed and are in the freezer. This week I was able to get another 25 kilos and I am pressure canning it. Now why am I pressure canning it? Because when it's pressure canned it's shelf stable. It will last for two years, two and a half, three years on the shelf and it will still be good to eat. If the power goes out and my freezer defrosts, what's in the freezer is lost. But what's on the shelf because it's been canned is safe. So pressure canning is just another way of preserving and gives me options. Now, tonight's show is going to be a bit backwards simply because I don't want to be here with you for an hour and a half, two hours. That's just ridiculous. So we're going to work backwards. Bear with me. I'm about to move you so that you can see the first batch coming out of the canner. And I'll show you what it's like. If you get seasick, close your eyes for a moment. Just so... As I move you, you don't get all um, woozy. Right, now, this is my pressure canner. It's a Presto 23 litre, 21 litre, 23 litre, something like that, quart, something like that, whatever. I'll have to check that for you because it's late, guys. I have been standing here for three and a half hours doing this. I'm tired. The chicken has been packed in jars, put in the pressure canner. It's vented for 10 minutes. The jiggler went on. The pressure came up to 11 pounds, which is what I need for where I am. And because I'm using pint jars, it had to work its magic for 75 minutes, an hour and 15 minutes. Then I turned the heat off. And I'll just let it sit until the pressure's come down to zero, which is what it is now. So I'm going to very carefully take the jiggle off because we don't need that there. Open the lid and I'll show you the final product first. So, ouch, hot, 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 hot. Lift, let it drip. Now, trusty tongs. Oh, and they look so good. Now, I've got 10 um, pint jars in here. I'll lift them all out. These will sit here now overnight. I'll show you in just a moment. Last time to bring out, I'll give you a close up. I might have had a bit much water in it this time. Now, this was raw packed chicken. No broth added to it, nothing added to it, just the chicken in the jars. I'm trying to get nine jars in there. I had ten. It's all right, miscounted. That's the jar. Yeah. Let me show you up close. Can you see? See the bubbles? Can you see those bubbles working there? It's all bubbling away in there. It's all chicken cooking 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 it's all delicious now i'll leave these now i will not move them 
I let them sit overnight until they are cool. Now we might here, I'll check you down again, don't look. Um, we might hear them ping as they cool while I'm showing you in reverse what we did. Okay, moving you again, guys. So just be careful if you get woozy. Don't want it, whoops. Don't want to um, make anyone too sick. Now, that's 10 pints of chicken there. I have another 20 here waiting to go in the pressure canner. I'll show you how I prepared it to go in. So I'll just move you down again so you can see what goes on. It's pretty easy, really. Let me see. This is oh, one of the big bags that I got. And it is, I don't know what it is, I can't tell. I don't know. It's 506 grams, probably five kilos or something. It's pretty heavy. So I ordered this from Australian Butcher today. Before I go dipping my hands in this lovely mess of chicken, I'll just wash them. I'll be right back. I'm drying them because they're about to get gooby again. Now, I'll show you quickly. This was skin on chicken, so I just ripped the tenderloins off and ripped the skin off. I think I talked last time that I don't like the skin on the chicken. We don't do anything with it. So I'm putting it into a bowl. It will get run out to the Bakashi bucket. When I'm finished, and I will keep that bit of chicken. Don't throw away good meat, folks. Now, I don't worry too much about um, the little bits of fat that are... Oh, did you hear the ping? That was a lid. That means it's sealed. Oh, yes, that's what I want to hear. It's good, good chicken there, so I'm going to chop that off. Maybe. I'll leave it there to see what I do. Okay. Um, now, what do I use this chicken for? I use it for uh, tacos, for enchiladas, for chicken salad, for chicken salad sandwiches. I use it um, to make chicken pie. I will open a jar occasionally and use it to make chicken soup which is really makes the soup so much faster if the chicken is already cooked. Then all we have to do is to wait for the veggies for the chicken soup. Okay. So you hear the other lid go pop. That's very really good. See these little bits of, um, there's another one. There's the ceiling. That's music to my ear. Now, I use a pressure canner, not a pressure cooker. Pressure cookers and pressure canners, two totally different beasts. They do very different jobs. You cannot use a pressure cooker, even if it says you can. You cannot use a pressure cooker for pressure canning. Well, actually, you can, but it won't work. It will not be safe. The food you preserve will not be safe. The pressure cookers don't get up to a high enough temperature. They don't get up to a high enough pressure and they don't sustain the pressure for the amount of time that's needed for pressure canning. So don't think if you have a pressure cooker that you can pressure can. You can't. Right, now toss all this back in here because I am going to chop some up and I'll show you what I do. I won't let you watch it all because that's 
just not there. there's another one how good is that I need to dry my hands again simply because i'm about to use a sharp knife and i don't want to cut I can't afford to lose a finger. Okay. Big sharp knife, empty jar, wide mouth funnel. Can you see? Chop, 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 chop. Now, I learned to do chicken this way from. Um, watching youtube videos i read the ball book the ball book of preserving which is the bible of um, preserving i sort of think and then i watched videos now my all-time favorite youtuber for canon videos is sutton's days and that's d-a-z-e look them up on youtube brilliant and I like Sutton's Days because Lisa sticks to the recommendations. Guys, when I'm baking, you know, the, it's or cooking and it's a recipe, I might change up ingredients or I might switch out the cooking time or whatever. When you are preserving food, when you are bottling food, canning food dehydrating food um, freezing food you cannot skimp on safety now there's lots of groups out there you know rebel canners all that sort of thing and some of the things they do are perfectly fine but you cannot skimp on safety it's just not worth it botulism kills and you do not want to be responsible not only wasting a bunch of time and money but killing your family making them sick because you took a shortcut or you didn't um, follow the recommendations now it's really easy to say and i've had people say it to me but you know grandma did this or great auntie mabel did that or whatever and that's fine because in grandma's time that may have been acceptable. Okay, you need to leave about an inch of headspace in the jars. But this is raw paint. Now, some people might call it ugly chicken. Call it what you like. It's raw paint, and there is no um, broth being added to it. It is just chicken. So all that um lovely lovely broth that you saw in those jars i'm just filling in there as many air holes as i can i don't want as much a lot of air gaps in there okay top up this one this is what i started before um or it's some kind of you know Ugly chicken, sometimes known as raw pack chicken, raw pack chicken, sometimes known as ugly chicken. But it is just chicken. Nothing but chicken in the jars. Let me squish it down. If I can take my hand out of the funnel, you'll hear the squishing. Sorry about um, the noise off the glass cutting board, and it might be driving me crazy. But I use a glass cutting board when I am doing chicken. So that I can sterilize it when I'm finished. Okay, one more jar. There we go. And then this is the last of my pint jars. The next jars will have to be quartz, um, unfortunately, because I'm out of pint jars and I don't know when I'll be able to get more. Well, I have to eat more. Or I'll have to find other ways to preserve. Okay, now I figured these are really big chicken fillets. And they're around the 500, 480 to 500 gram um, weight. So I figure if I get one to a jar, then that's roughly 500 grams of chicken, which is what I use 
for most of our meals anyway, so I'm happy with that. When I do the quart jars, um, they will have to be kept for I'm um, doing lots of pies or you know, big things of soup or whatever. I'm packing the jars as I go just because it's easier. Easier to slice. I don't have a big pile of diced chicken that I've got to try and control because it's slippery. Slippery little suckers. Now I'm cutting it into huh, the dice size dice I would normally if I was going to make a sweet and sour or um, enchiladas or something like that. You can use bigger dice, you can use smaller dice. As long as you pack it into your jar, jiggle it around, squish it down so there's no... Um, oh, it's handy having the um, computer there so I can see both sides of the jar. Um, then it's fine. Now, we'll leave that there for the minute so that I don't have you here forever. Next step, wash my hands again. A lot of hand washing in this, only because I can't stand icky fingers. But to get the jars ready, they're all packed now. To get the jars ready to go into the canner, I have a paper towel and some vinegar, a little bowl of vinegar. And I'm going to wipe around the rims. You must wipe around the rims. I don't know why people think they don't have to, but you do. You need to get it and wipe around it. Two reasons. It takes any any bits of the rim that are going to um, stop it from sealing properly, stop the lid from sealing properly. But also, as you run your finger around it, if there's any little nicks in it, You'll feel them because you can't always see them. And if there are nicks in the rims of your jars, they will not seal. Now, these are just regular mouth jars. So here's the lids for them. Here's the rings, lids on, ring on, and finger tight. Not really, really tight, just finger tight. Just like that. And they're ready to go into the canner. So I need to let the canner, let me go, I'll tip myself back up. I need to let the canner, oh, that light's bad, sorry, darlings. I need to let the canner cool down before I start the process again. Once it has cooled down, I will load it with 10 jars of chicken, put the lid on, turn the heat on and when it starts to vent and there will be steam coming out of the top I'll set the timer for 10 minutes once that 10 minutes up the weight goes back on it it comes up to pressure when it comes up to the 11 pounds I start the timer on the oven for 75 minutes an hour and 15 minutes and then it's done once that hour and 15 minutes is up keep it steady at 11 pounds pressure turn the heat off leave the canner alone until it comes down to zero and then you can open it and take out your ugly chicken now you need to take it out put it somewhere where it can just sit and seal and cool down overnight just leave it and then in the morning i'll take the bands off wipe the jars over with a clean cloth and label them and put them on the shelf. And sometime tonight I'll be finished with all this chicken and we will have around, well, we'll have 30, 33 pint jars and probably around four quart jars of chicken on the shelf ready to be used. Now it's already cooked, so the it's already cooked. You don't need to do anything to it. You can open it and eat it straight out of the jar. Would I eat chicken like that? No, not normally, but if I was hungry enough and the power was out and there was nothing else to eat, then I probably would. But it's safe to eat. 
and it's safe to keep on your shelf. So, ugly chicken, cat's way, hopefully the safest way. And it's simple. Remember, though, it is a pressure canner, not a pressure cooker. Wipe your jar, rims of your jars before you put the lids on. Finger tight with the bands. And then process them, process it for the right amount of time. Now, pints, um, 75 minutes at 11 pounds pressure. When I do the quart jars, it will be an hour and a half, 90 minutes at 11 pounds pressure. And it will be a mixture of quarts and pint jars in that load. So it will process, the, the pints will process for the 90 minutes because that's what the quarts need, 90 minutes. Easy as. And that's it. But let me show you one more time. Here we are. I would normally not do this once it's set. I tend to like to leave it. But there you go. It's all done. And you probably can't see, but it has sealed. It's popped. The little button has gone down. So it's ready to cool down and then be labelled, cleaned, labelled and put on the shelf. That's how you pressure can chicken. There's really no, no trick to it. Follow the rules. That's all I can say. If you are dealing with poultry, meat, food, you need to follow the rules for preservation. It just makes sense to be safe. It doesn't take any longer to do it this way than it does to do it any other way. It's just the safe way to do it. Make sure your jars are clean. Now you don't need to, you don't need to sterilize. If you're pressure canning, you don't need to sterilize your jars. If you're hot water bathing, you do. If you're putting jam in them, you do. But for pressure canning, you don't need to. But all my jars go through the dishwasher but they're also stored in the shed. So when they come in from the shed, even though they're upside down in their boxes, I still wash them in soapy water, rinse them in clean water so that I know they're at least clean before I pack them. And why don't you have to sterilise them? Because the internal temperature, because it's under pressure, the internal temperature is so high and it's the pressure is sustained for so long and all the nasties die if there's nasties in there they don't survive so there you go easy as ugly chicken i will put a link underneath um to the sutton sutton's days youtube channel it is well worth if you are interested in pressure canning well worth watching great advice easy to follow sensible practical and a good way to learn too okay so if you know someone who might um, like to know about pressure canning chicken please use the share link to send them the link to this video <laughs> i'm so tired guys i'm so tired i can barely think and if you know someone who you know might benefit from knowing about the cheapskates club again um let them know and send them the link thank you so much for joining us i'm off to load up the canner again and then pack some more jars see you next time <laughs>